Hello and welcome to our today's webinar regarding the topic turbocharging. My name is Sarah Moore and I'm very pleased to welcome so many of you to our webinar today. I welcome very warmly Ulrich Heiermann, manager of the technical application team, and Tobias Joswig from the global sales team of EMAC. Introductory, there will be the market situation of turbocharger presented, subsequent the technical functionality and single work pieces will be shown. Exciting is also the answer of the question, how the manufacturing process will be looked like on a real workpiece. This will be exemplary shown at the Turbinschaft. So far from my side, and now I directly hand over to Ulrich and Tobias and wish an interesting webinar. Hello, and uh, thank you, Sarah, for the uh, short introduction and also a warm welcome from my side. Yeah, first of all, the question, why do we talk about turboladders today? One example for the importance of uh, turboladders is the topic of downsizing. Downsizing means that combustion engines will be smaller and smaller, the fuel consumption will be lower and lower, and of course, um, the exhaust emissions will be also um, reduced. Uh, the turbochargers help in this way to keep the power output of um, yeah, combustion engines constant um, by using uh, turbochargers and even also when downsize these combustion, combustion engines. So, as Sarah mentioned, um, we will start with a short overview of the market situation, then we will go ahead to the operating principle of turbochargers. After this step, Ulrich will uh, guide you through the design of a turbocharger and give you more details about the individual components. And last but not least, we will take a look at the manufacturing of turbine shafts in detail and give you also some examples of machines. So let's start with the market overview. Depending on a study by FEV and uh, in cooperation with the VDMA, uh, we can see that we get a market growth until the year 2025, about 91 million units per year um, of internal combustion engine vehicles. The 91 million combustion engines we have in 2025, uh, including the plug-in hybrid vehicles, the mild and the full hybrid vehicles, and also the internal combustion engine only vehicles. We expect um, that in 2025, 60% of combustion engines will be turbocharged. This means that annual turbocharger production will grow from the current level of just 42.5 million turbochargers in the year 2019 to uh, the 251.6 million turbochargers in the year 2025. And this will be a growth rate of about 28.5% in production of turbochargers per year. If we now look at the more and more tighter regulation on exhaust emissions by politicians, um, this underlines the need for downsizing and in this way the benefits of turbochargers. As already mentioned, turbochargers will help to maintain the performance of combustion engines even when downsizing. That's the point where we go to our turbochargers and the function principle. You can see two turbochargers here are basically basically out of a passenger cars. Um, the turbocharger basically has a hot side and a cold side, or a cold side and a hot side in this charger. Between these two sides, there runs the turbine shaft yeah, on both turbochargers. The exhaust gas will power the turbine wheel or via the turbine wheel, the turbine shaft, and the air supply for the combustion engine will be compressed by the compressor wheel. When we have a look at these two turbochargers, we will see a small difference. Uh, important difference is on these turbochargers, you can see the so-called variable turbocharger geometry unit. This unit will also help to um, increase the efficiency of these turbochargers um, by using on combustion engines. So that's for the first step. Um, we will now go ahead directly to the design of a turbocharger and so I will hand over to Ulrich. He will guide you to the next step. Yes, thank you Tobias and Sarah for the introduction. My name is Ulrich Heiermann and I'm working here at EMAG in Salach in the technical quotation department um, and uh, also for uh, responsible for applications, for setting up applications. 
And so um, and that we have a good overview of um, a lot of um, inquiries and uh, at, at least and uh, good for us that we have sold a lot of uh, components in our machines uh, also regarding the turbocharger. You saw in the introduction and you have heard that in our cutted models here, uh, you saw that there are a lot of components. The housings, the bearing housing, the compressor and the turbine housing and in the middle as, as the core of, of the tower charger, uh, the shaft, you see these all these components and um, in, in the next uh, couple of minutes I would like to guide you through um, some examples what we have realized in our machines and um, <coughs> uh, how these uh, examples will be machined and uh, some technical data to this. So here another picture as, as an overview. You can skip and go first into the... My first example is here, the bearing housing. The bearing housing you see on the right hand side has a lot of material to remove um, out of the casted um, uh, rough part and below you see the finished the finished part after turning and um, that has to be operated into two process steps OP10 and OP20. Um, so that is a turning and drilling and boring operation and uh, for that we use our VL series that consists out of sizes. We will explain that later. Uh, VL4 is, is sold many times because uh, more power and um, the size of uh, the rough part which is necessary here to uh, to carry and to take into the machine. So OP10, uh, you see the, the front side means bore and turning operations, uh, clamping at the back side with a fixed stop and the chuck and the OP20 uh, clamping on the opposite side and uh, then turning the face and uh, the head of the, the part. To give you an idea um, how long and uh, how big this part here and, and what cycle time, um, that is, for example, OP10 has a diameter which has to be machined of 45 millimeter and uh, takes a cycle time with, with the operations we marked here in this little sketch of around about 90 to 100 seconds and the OP20 um, has a diameter uh, to machine and to remove chips here of 100 millimeter and that takes also a cycle time of 90 to 100 seconds uh, because here is a little bit less uh, uh, to machine and less uh, tools, less operation. So you can balance um, uh, these in a uh, in a line with uh, two machines uh, if you want to uh, set up a production. Now Tobias will show you um, how this wheel series is set up and designed. Yeah, let's have a short look uh, inside of the VL machine. As base of the VL machine series, we are, uh, always have a column made of concrete, we call it mineralit. Um, there we can see the, the slide and the work spindle um, with some covers and housings for preventing going chips inside. We see the clamping device mounted on the spindle with uh, also some covers around. We see the base for the turret in the turret himself with about 12 spaces uh, for tools. Um, yeah, in combination with, um, ah, first of all, we have the option, a measuring probe. Uh, this can mount it optionally inside of the machine. Then we have the integrated automation in combination with the control unit, um, the front covers, and also the media supply on the backside. So as, as well as the chip conveyor, we have a functionable system. Um, let's have a look inside of the system. Um, this machine is working in the pickup principle, so it will pick up work pieces from the integrated automation uh, into the workspace. There we can see uh, the turret working with the different tools. Uh, let me say that we have two options with the turret. Uh, first of all, we can we have the option to use uh, live tools at the turret, 
Uh, the second option we can offer is uh, that we add an epsilon axis to the turret for further operating um, options inside of the machine. Um, yeah, so we see in our example now different uh, operation steps inside of the machine. Now the spindle will uh, drive the workpiece to the, to the measuring probe. Um, one further uh, issue at the measuring probe is that the measuring probe is able to send the information, the measuring results back to the machine. And so the machine will reach always good qualities. And on this point, um, I will give back to Ulrich. Yes, thank you for the explanation. Um, so, as you have seen, that is a vertical uh, machine design, uh, a vertical machining area, and that allows you to have a small footprint for these machine types. And um, then, if we can uh, offer you different sizes from, from VL2 up to VL8, uh, gives us a maximum diameter of the workpiece in the wheel two of 100 millimeter and in in the in the wheel eight of 400 millimeter workpiece diameter and um, um, corresponding here um, um, spindle power from uh, the, the lowest machine uh, increasing to the highest machine uh, to, to the big size uh, parts so my next Example here is the uh, is the turbine and the compressor housing. I will um, take them together in, in one folder because the machining operation is uh, very similar. Um, the difficult here difficulty here is um, that the geometry of these parts, and you see that also here, um, we have uh, some uh, components and design components which which uh, have a very extended uh, design. So if you want to machine the, the areas here, the flange and the connecting areas uh, to the bearing housing, then um, uh, the difficulty is to cover that in a, in a chuck, what is suitable to pick up uh, these, uh, these housings out of, out of from, from the conveyor. And um, for that, we need normally then, it's necessary to take a bigger machine. Also, if the uh, diameter to machine is, is a smaller diameter. So that means mostly we need wheel six machines for this machining of these components. Then the chuck size has to be very big because it has also to balance uh, the, the geometry uh, during clamping in this chuck. And that is what you see here also in the pictures. Um, machining in OP10 and OP20 means uh, um, to, to take care uh, that this uh, geometry is covered by the chuck. But not only uh, with the chuck, um, then also uh, with the workpiece carriers, which have been placed on, on the conveyor. Um, because our vertical z-axis in the machine picks it up in a straight way. So uh, we have to take care with the carrier um, that the axis of the final machining in the uh, working area is um, reached and we can, we can uh, arrange in a straight way. Here, the example for, for parallel flanges and the other possibility is what you every know which are familiar with these parts that they can be inclined uh, these two uh, faces um, from one to the other and also this is uh, the challenge to um, uh, find the correct um, and the best fitting chuck for this um, solution. OP10 and OP20 is by these reasons also divided into two machines of course, you can change over each machine. If you want to build up a line, then it makes sense to take two machines which are set up for uh, each um, clamping and each operation. The next part I would like to mention here is the um, compressor wheel. The compressor wheel is a part out of aluminium. Um, first of all, we do not machine the blades. That is sometimes a question. Um, 
that is an operation which is done afterwards on, on a five axis machining center. Uh, we are doing uh, the um, outer, outer contour here and the outer profile of, of this uh, part and also the bore inside where um, the shaft is at the end assembled. Um, here we have found that are also two um, ways are possible to machine these parts. Um, first of all, on, on the right hand side, the picture shows that it can come uh, as a raw part uh, with out of a sort material, out of a sort bar. And uh, then we machine um, in two steps, that uh, means two clampings at the end. Um, the picture and the photo on, on the upper right hand side is uh, shown the finished part. The alternative to that is uh, shown in the, in the lower picture. The photo shows you a little pin and a, and a diameter on the rough and, and pre-forged um, uh, rough part. Uh, this diameter and this pin is a lost material at the end and um, we make a plunge cut um, after finish machining and then you can break it. So uh, um, the benefit here is you can clamp it at this diameter and we have access uh, with all tools to the complete geometry. And that means uh, we need only one clamping and can uh, make the finish machining in one clamping. Uh, on, the, on the sort bar, um, we need two clampings. And that is the difference. Um, everything is uh, weighable and we have quoted and also we have sold uh, machines for that which are running in production. To give you an idea, um, what um, it, it looks very simple because it's an aluminium part, but uh, uh, it has a um, uh, challenge uh, also in, in the quality here. Uh, means the diameter, the bore in the middle has a tolerance, um, a required tolerance of uh, around about uh, by um, with a diameter of 5.09, for example, is uh, the requirement. Uh, 0 0.003 as in the, in the diameter tolerance. And what we have reached here is a tolerance uh, of 1.2 to a uh, little bit more than two microns in tolerance after reaming of this ball. Um, next is the rectangularity uh, from the face to the ball. Also, this is a requirement which is very critical. Here is the um, tolerance which is uh, listed and which is uh, required in the, in the drawing, five microns in rectangularity and uh, we reach uh, three microns in our production uh, machine what we have sold here in the field. That is to give you an idea for that, <coughs> what we can do for you. My next example is uh, the vein ring. It is called vein ring and uh, that belongs to the VTG uh, adjustment here in, uh, on that side. The so vein ring is the base where the, where the wings, um, uh, which, which bear the wings. Uh, and and uh, you see on that picture here that there are a lot of operations. So turning and drilling of course, uh, the, the balls have a tight, uh, tight tolerances and quality. It's a reaming process afterwards. Milling also is included. For that, it is necessary, also necessary to use two operations because uh, OP10 and OP20, um, because we have to machine it from both sides. And um, that is only able, or you're only able to do that in two clampings. And for that, um, Besides, uh, we have we have the solution to use two machines, for example, as explained before. But on the other side, um, we have the possibility to do it in one machine that gives you gives you a, a shorter footprint. And um, this machine is shown here. We call it VL3 Duo. So what you see is that it has two simul uh, independent working areas, each with 
main spindle and a turret inside, according to the explanation of Tobias before, so-called two machines and two operating areas in one housing. So the chuck carries the part and uh, also the probe is available and then we have the conveyor at the side to pick up the part, change from rough to finished part and that is a possibility and an option we can quote. In the back side we have our own uh, made by our own uh, track motion we call it, track motion system that is a transfer system for components. Uh, with uh, such a kind of um, uh, stacker and, and storage uh, um, unit at the, at the side of, of this uh, machine. And then it brings, turned around 180 degrees, turned around the part and it can go to the second, or it goes to the second machining area, what you see here. Um, was a separate and independent main spindle uh, with a separate turret. Each turret, as you remember, has 12 places. I yeah. would like to shortly interrupt for the first question from okay. our audience. Um, is it possible to machine components regarding the wastegate in your machines? Yes, it is. Um, <coughs> waste, gate, uh, waste gate is uh, the other side to adjust, uh, the other possibility to adjust the, the exhaust gas um, in, in the turbocharger. The waste gate consists, what is interesting uh, for, for machining, uh, consists out of a spindle, which uh, is, is assembled here, and the, the, the disc, the disc is uh, called in German Klappenteller. Uh, and these two components can be machined in, in, our, uh, in our machines. Uh, the spindle is a little bit, uh, yeah, it has very different geometries, what we have found out. Uh, so first it is easy to machine the diameter. Um, it has to be turned at the end for um, getting the quality. Sometimes it has to be ground. Um, on the other end of the spindle is um, the connecting area for the, for the disc. And that is a design uh, what is very different from, from uh, turbocharger makers. Um, the design shows um, holes and, and uh, other geometries. Uh, and that gives us, or that needs to be uh, covered and, um, and carried. In, a, in the chuck, and uh, that is the challenge here in, in, in this. Um, so we also we have to use two clampings then. First clamping is to machine the, the diameter, and the second uh, clamping is to machine the connection area for the disc. But uh, to answer the question, yes, um, if you have an uh, inquiry for that, uh, we can do. Uh, we come to an example what we would like to show you. That is the process um, uh, of manufacturing of the turbine shaft. And so um, we can give you an overview here. Um, uh, what uh, we know and what we see, how it is uh, machined in the different productions. Yeah, one uh, important point when we talk about the turbine shaft is uh, that we need to talk of two different variants. Um, mean that we have uh, the first variant where the uh, turbine shaft and the turbine wheel will be processed in a separate way. So it means we first process, uh, process uh, the shaft and then the wheel or in uh, the parallel way. The variant two is um, when we start processing after the friction welding step. Now means that we have a complete turbine chef, uh, and so we will talk about these different um, variants. And uh, I think Ulrich will uh, start with the variant one. So what you see here, and, and what we have seen, uh, is that uh, that is a philosophy from of the of the turbine uh, makers. 
because uh, this variant one is a philosophy to uh, a strategy to to process the um, uh, the shaft and the wheel separately, and uh, the um, process chain after welding um, is philosophy number two. Um, that uh, means um, it depends, and we can cover both. And uh, I would like to explain you that. So that uh, what you see here on the on the left hand side is the variant number one. Uh, the variant number one um, has uh, as basic parts or as base parts. We start with the forged shaft and with the uh, cast casted wheel, and that are separate parts, and they have to be machined separately. So first we start with the turning of the shaft, then centerless grinding, which is not in our portfolio, and uh, then turning the turbine wheel um, for preparing of the welding. And after that, uh, we can also offer um, out of the EMAC group the laser welding. So that is here the variant number one, and uh, I will go through and uh, explain these processes here and on the right hand side um, uh, you see the areas which are machined. So let me start with the uh, operation of shaft turning. The shaft turning um, should be done. Uh, the requirement here is to make a complete turning of the shaft uh, that uh, needs uh, also to machine both ends of the shaft, and that is also a challenge. So we need to uh, do two clampings. The first clamping is done in a VT machine. VT machine will be explained later. Uh, VT is our shaft turning machine. So we clamp it in, uh, in the top, uh, in a chuck in the top of this machine and machine first uh, the center at the end and making the length and then uh, with a four axis machining uh, we do the, um, uh, the turning of the shaft. The second operation then is, uh, the, is done in a VL machine. This VL machine um, is, uh, takes the part in, also in a, in a collar chuck and then we can machine uh, the second end of the shaft. That gives us the possibility to uh, operate here in such a small line uh, to um, set up uh, this um, production. And um, why do I show uh, three machines? The, the reason for that is uh, that the cycle time for, for turning the shaft is around about 40 seconds and the cycle time for turning the uh, end uh, on the VL machine is around about um, 20 seconds. And so with a connection system, our track motion, you have seen in the VL Duo video, uh, can connect these machines uh, from a conveyor and a stacker system at the beginning for rough parts to a stacker system at the end for finished parts. Um, uh, we can set up here some uh, or such an example for a complete line. And then we'll shortly interrupt for another question from our audience. Which qualities can you make achieve at the shaft turning process? Yes, I can answer this. The quality for the shaft turning process um, is, for example, uh, after turning, uh, the diameters, uh, the requirement of the diameters on, on the bearing seat, for example, is um, uh, required with around about 0 0.05 um, millimeter on, uh, on the diameter. For example, here for passenger car shaft, it's six, six, six to seven millimeter. Um, so that is the requirement, 0 0.05 and we reach uh, 0 0.02 to 0 0.03 on diameter. That is uh, what, what we reach in, in our machines and uh, what is running uh, in the production. The run out uh, on this uh, bearing diameter 
is um, required with 0 0.1 um, millimeter and we reach 0 0.06 millimeter here in, in this um, um, uh, machines and the length from from the shoulder wheel of uh, the shoulder of the wheel to the shoulder where is the, where is the uh, compressor wheel assembled is required also from plus minus 0 0.05 to um, uh, that is the requirement and what we reach is 0 0.02 in this in this case in the next step we will just uh, go to this video and have a look at the vt2 machine i will just give you some comments uh, as well as at the vl series we have also a column made of concrete uh, mounted at this column we have the work, sp uh, work spindle with the clamping device inside of the machine um, there we see the media supply change at the bottom of the column is uh, mounted the tailstock with some additional covers yeah, we see the preparation for the um, turret uh, drive units uh, as well as the covers and uh, for preventing that go the chips goes inside of these units there we see the, the both turrets each of these turrets has uh, 11 plus 1 uh, spaces for tools plus 1 is for the cripper um, because this machine is loading and unloading parts by an, an, a mounted cripper from these two O automations or to these O automations um, we have integrated in this machine. Uh, we have some front covers as well as the control unit and the media supply unit and a chip conveyor. And so we have uh, another functionable system we can use. So um, let's have a look inside of this machine. As uh, mentioned, we have the loading by the turn number one into the uh, clamping device. We see a centering process and uh, the next steps a deep hole, uh, deep drilling, deep hole drilling process in two steps. Um, this will um, be able with a four axis processing by the two turrets. Then the clamping device will drive through the tailstock. There we see the turning process, uh, scrubbing and a finishing also in two steps. Um, at the finishing where we get some tolerances uh, required to our processes. Um, it's just an example. Um, in, in this example, we have a thread rolling or thread cutting process at the end. And then we will see how uh, the machine is unloading the part with the second gripper on the turn number two to the O automation. Uh, just as further information, this machine um, or, the, or these um, O automations can have up to 24 pallets. Um, depending on the size of the pellets, so we get a small buffer um, at the machine and so the machine can work um, autonomous for, uh, for a defined time. So then, back to Ulrich. Thank you. Um, so what we have explained so far is uh, that we use VL and VT machines for, for this production of the components. Uh, it is also possible to uh, use uh, customized solutions in, in that machines and one of these customized solutions um, is uh, an example I show here. Um, if we have to machine these shafts, as mentioned before, in, in two operations, um, then uh, it is also possible to do it in one machine when we use an upper and a lower uh, spindle in that machine and that is uh, also possible to uh, get from AMAC. Um, alternative here is a um, um, center drive uh, of the part, but the center drive has limits uh, when, when we talk about part length and uh, because these parts are sometimes uh, 80 to 100 millimeter in length um, then it is, is critical to uh, make the machining here. Um, so, if the machine is equipped with an upper and a lower spindle, it gives us it gives us the possibility to load it into the machining area and clamp it in a first step, uh, upper and lower, uh, chuck together and make a four-axis machining of the turning operations. Uh, then open or put put in a steady rest and, and clamp the part to fix it and drive it from the upper spindle uh, and machine the, the, the lower end uh, here with, with drilling and, and turning, um, making this center at the lower end and then close the chuck on the lower spindle 
um, and open the spindle and the chuck on the top and then we can machine uh, the area on the other side of the wheel. Uh, that is an example what I show you here, uh, what enables you to make uh, this complete operation in one machine. It must be clear that it, it takes more time and so um, it is uh, not for mass production, it is more, more or less for a flexible production uh, where you can uh, quickly change over uh, collets and, and uh, make another type. Um, and so, uh, for example, here this um, um, machining takes a cycle time of 1.35 minutes in uh, comparison to the other, what I showed before in the short line, it was uh, 20 seconds uh, cycle time of the complete part, but uh, um, by machining with uh, uh, three machines in the line. So my next example I would like to show you here, that is um, then the next step in, in the variant number one as uh, in, in our operation sequence is the uh, preparing of the Inconel uh, turbine wheel. Um, we have to prepare the connecting area for the laser welding and for, for the joining process afterwards. That is a very simple operation, but uh, the challenge here is also the material. It is, as you remember, Inconel. And um, also here are two um, uh, requirements. What we have seen so far is uh, when I go back here, you see only this area to machine has to be machined. And in the next um, picture, I, you see that sometimes um, we have the requirement to make the uh, center and, and the diameter on the opposite side. Uh, this um, can be done in uh, such a uh, wl 3 duo machine. Uh, this duo machine we have explained before and uh, this little video shows you how it works. Here the uh, Loading of the system is done manually, can also be done automatically. Uh, inside, in the back, you saw a little robot, that is also an option. And then uh, we go into a real 3 door machine, which picks up the part from, from the conveyor and from the shuttle. And uh, we do the centering operation and, and the turning um, of the diameter and then change the part and the robot um, takes the part and makes the job to turn it around to the other side of the machine and doing the operation number two, OP20. And here we machine in one step and one plunge we machine with a special tool we machine this, com this face completely in one plunge. Very simple, but uh, it has to be done, it's necessary, and so um, the machine is able to do that. Next step in our process sequence is the welding. Um, you are, or EMAC is an, is an um, multi-technology group, and that is a benefit of what you get uh, here uh, out of the hand of AMAC. Um, and so one of the technology, you can read it in each folder on the top, uh, which technologies uh, are covered by AMAC. One of these technology is the laser welding. And the laser welding of uh, here, this variant number one sequence is um, uh, the laser welding of shaft and wheel. Um, so it works as follows. We join the part uh, together. Everything is done in the machine. There will be loaded the wheel and the shaft separately. Then it will be joined together and clamped in in the upper chuck and the lower chuck. So the wheel and the shaft will be clamped separately. Then um, those components uh, are able to turn around and the laser beam uh, here, in this case, we have two laser beams in 180 degrees and uh, opposite uh, way arranged. 
and uh, they run simultaneously and uh, weld uh, these two components together. The benefit uh, why laser is the other way or the alternative is uh, electro beam welding. Uh, electro beam welding needs a vacuum and uh, that is not necessary here in our case what we offer is uh, laser welding. So following our concept and our um, <laughs> red line is uh, now the variant number two. The variant number two shows you that um, uh, we need in the variant number two, we need uh, friction welding. Uh, as I said before, that is, um, that is a philosophy of, of the makers. And after friction welding, uh, we have to run through all these um, process sequences here. And that is what I'd like to show you further on. Um, so we see um, the first step is then the turning, turning operation here, we can uh, use uh, once again our VT uh, model and this VT model runs in the following way. So loading into the turret and then uh, wire the turret into the chuck. The chuck has uh, swiveling fingers so that we can uh, make the centering and the length operation of, of the shaft. The base and the zero point of, of the operation is the back side of the wheel, so that we can exactly machine the length. After that, we remove the welding seam, and um, then the four axis turning operation of the complete chuck has to be done. And then loading and unloading um, automatically to the right hand, right hand, left hand, left hand, or left to right. That is uh, um, depends on your workflow in, in your plant. The next benefit what we can offer, and when you ask EMAC, uh, then we can offer the next technology in this process step, that is the uh, hardening, um, sometimes required in, in bigger shafts. Uh, hardening of bearing seats uh, for, for truck uh, shafts or, or pickups or some, some turbochargers like this. Um, also annealing of the welding seam is a requirement here. That is, uh, can be done by the company uh, the EMAC technology unit, uh, which is called EMAC LDEC. Uh, they provide um, an induction hardening systems and that is something we can integrate here in uh, this process step. I would shortly, one more time, interrupt for another question. Does EMAC use coolant in the shaft turning process? Yes, EMAC does, because uh, the, what I mentioned, the removement or the removal of the welding seam is um, a very hard operation. And for that, we need in, uh, coolant with high pressure, and so we use uh, high pressure around about 70 to 80 bar um, in the machine. And um, then also for the rest, it helps uh, to get the quality. And so the answer is yes. Our next process step we can quote is the grinding of the, of the blades and the grooves. That is a uh, machine which is a um, VTC 100 GT machine. It's, it's a kind of VT machine we explained before, but not a turning machine on the, on the place where the second uh, turret is uh, assembled. And uh, normally in the machine, we put a grinding wheel on the X and Z cross light. And so we have the possibility to grind uh, these uh, two areas here, the groove and, and the blade, the profile of the blade, in one step by using a multi-layer wheel, a conventional wheel. And um, it is, the part is then climbed in, in a collet chuck and on the upper spindle and on the, in the top of the, and in the bottom of the machine where normally the tailstock is placed, uh, there we can arrange a, a dressing spindle. And so um, you can see here that um, it is a profile diamond disc where the geometry of the grooves uh, will be plunged um, during the dressing and then uh, <coughs> copy it to the uh, grinding process.
Last not least, uh, a very uh, important operation um, for both variants, variant number one and variant number two, uh, also the, the grinding of the blades, but uh, at least the uh, balancing of the part, uh, we can offer with um, the ECM process. The ECM um, is also um, can be offered from EMAC. ECM means electrochemical metal cutting. That is a process where we use the cathode for, for the tool and, and the anode for the workpiece. And by using an electrolyte, we can remove in the uh, gap between the tool and the workpiece, we can remove the metal. And so it is a contactless um, process. Um, which is very accurate and uh, where we can calculate the material, what has to be removed. And that is another benefit um, in normal lines, uh, in normal production lines. Um, these process that will done with uh, milling operations. Uh, the milling operations um, uh, remove the material um, with milling tools, of course. But it is necessary to measure the unbalance uh, quality, then go to the milling operation, uh, then measure again. And uh, very often uh, you need to have uh, two or uh, one or two or three um, circuits uh, to remove this material. And um, that takes time. So very often we need to you need or we need to have uh, two or three um, uh, milling machines here. And now I come to the benefit. The ECM process in, in this um, stage is uh, that uh, you need only to have one uh, iteration step, and you get the very good quality of 0 0.05 uh, gram millimeter of um, unbalance of uh, quality and balance quality at the end of this process. That can be quoted by EMAC. And um, so then I'm at the end of my uh, process sequence and uh, we would like to show you a short video. Uh, at the end of our presentation, we would like to summarize a little bit for you um, what you can see here is a manufacturing system for turbochargers, just as example as EMA can quote it. Uh, we see some different machine types, the VT100, the Mind M1000, the HG2, a thread rolling operation. Um, we will see a VLC200 GT, um, a washer, a washing machine um, between. Um, we can also offer, how Ulrich said, uh, CI machines by ECM. Um, and of course, loading and unloading uh, automation systems at the beginning at the end. Yeah, we saw this this kind of machine at the presentation. Here we have a turbine shaft um, processed uh, in a, a VT100 uh, by two turrets in a four axis processing. Um, we see the tail stock, the clamping device um, as well. Um, this is for the pre-turning of the shaft. In the next example, we will see uh, Mind M1000 uh, for the hardening of the bearing seats. As example, you can see the two, these two inductors uh, for the preheating or for the hardening process. Um, you can see it's fully automated um, with a robot in this step. Um, this robot will guide the workpiece to the next automation um, equipment. There we see a VLC 200 GT. Um, on the right side, you will see the optional brush. We can uh, quote also inside of this kind of machine. Alternative, we have a VTC 100 GT. Uh, this type of machine is a little bit faster, but has not the option for getting a brush inside. Yeah, at the end, uh, you can see um, one example, the different stages of machining from the raw part to the ECM balanced uh, part. As an uh, example, how I said, and uh, that's the point where we are at the end of our presentation. Thank you very much. Many thanks to Ulrich and Tobias, and welcome back to our audience. Um, as I already mentioned at the beginning, we will now uh, come to some, for some further questions of you. Um, if there would be a question you would like to ask in confidence, you're very welcome to let us know. Here are the contact details. You will show them uh, later, on, later on one more time. Um, you can also arrange a one-to-one -one appointment with us or write us by mail. 
Um, so now we are ready uh, for some further questions. <clears throat> ah, here's the next one. Uh, in which market segment do we have the biggest growth? I will answer this question. Um, so um, let me show you our uh, cutting model again. Um, as mentioned in the presentation, we will see the VTG unit, the variable turbocharger geometry unit, um, and we see uh, one of the biggest growths inside of the turbocharger segment, um, as well as there in the um, VTG unit. So, um, of course, uh, the turbochargers um, are a grow, growing market, So, um, but in the segment of the VTG, we see the uh, biggest growth. Thank you. The next question came in. Do you have also a concept for compressor housing available or in code? Yes, uh, I have uh, shown in, in, in my presentation an example. Uh, so uh, compressor housing um, is the same as uh, the, the turbine housing in, in, uh, in clamping and machining. Um, means um, the geometry has to be covered by the, by the chuck and by the, um, by the pellets, which um, bring the, the parts to the, to the machine uh, pickup point. Um, in, in quotation, we have uh, just now, um, there is, is no actual quotation, but if you have an inquiry for that, uh, you can uh, answer and, and you can send it to us. What is the difference between EMAC and other man machine manufacturers regarding the machining of turbocharger components? Yes, uh, that is a good question. Um, so, um, as I mentioned in, in this presentation and in this webinar, uh, you saw that, that uh, EMAC is a multi-technology group where we can offer a lot of technologies and um, uh, beginning by step by step by turning machines and, and drilling and, and uh, milling operations in, in our machines, uh, we can quote uh, every process step and every component um, separately. But uh, what you have seen in this presentation, uh, EMAG is also able to uh, quote uh, different processes, means laser welding for turbocharger components or uh, ECM balancing or whatever you want. And um, that is uh, the big benefit, um, making uh, also these processes uh, out of one hand. Uh, you have one uh, person as, as, a connect, uh, as a contact and you can ask them and yeah, that is your, your contact. So uh, these benefits, we are all, every, everywhere, all over the world, we are close to our customers. Um, you see the, the map here of the world, everywhere is EMAC located. And um, so beginning by the single processes, uh, manually loaded, automatically loaded, uh, up to um, automatically loaded, and uh, interlinked machines uh, from process steps, from, from complete uh, process sequences or lines, what you saw in, in, in the last video. Everything is, is able to do, uh, including robot cells or, or whatever you can imagine. Uh, also, we can provide um, uh, measuring systems, um, which we can integrate here, not, not made by EMAC, but we can uh, provide that in, in our quote, measuring washing systems, everything. Uh, and so that is your benefit that you have. Uh, from EMAC, you can get a complete solution. So I got the information. We have quite a lot of more questions in the pipeline. We are very happy about your big interest of our webinar. Um, but I'm sorry, we cannot answer every question now. Um, but uh, later on, we will answer you. The, um, we will contact you by mail and answer your further questions um, uh, by mail. We have here also one more time the contact details if you want to have uh, the contact to our experts directly. And um, so, thank you for the attention. And um, I hope you were able to take some interesting impulses with you. 
Uh, thanks for your big interest and soon you can also find our webinar on YouTube where you also can find already other webinars uh, from further times. Um, we would like to thank you once again uh, in the participation also in the name of our experts here in the studio. Um, take care and if you want to, until next time. Goodbye.